Whenever you're considering bringing a dog into your home, the absolute number one thing you need to consider is whether the breed's typical traits mesh well with your lifestyle. It's all well and good getting a beautiful dog or a popular breed, but if you end up with a dog whose needs far more exercise than you can give it, then being pretty and in vogue means nothing. People taking on dogs who need to run for several hours a day and then only giving them 20 minutes of lead walking around the block is the main reason that many dogs end up in being rehomed all around the world. Indeed, in the US, the Labrador Retriever is one of the three most commonly found dog breeds in shelters up and down the country. This is likely due to the fact that, yes, they do need a lot of exercise, more than people people apparently realize. So to give it a number, let's refer to the energy scale of dog breeds. If we call the torpid, lethargic lump that is the bulldog a one, and the wired, electrified grasshopper that is the Belgian Malinois a 10, then the Labrador is probably around a seven. Obviously, there is a good deal of intrabreed variation here, as dictated by working versus showing lines of dogs, as well as age-related adjustments in activity levels, which means you might find a somewhat lazier showing lab or an older retired lab who's about a five as well as some of the more driven working specimens like Uncle Sully or Riley who are closer to an eight. Whilst Labradors are famed for their ability to adapt to their surroundings as well as being content to rest and snooze indoors their need for vigorous exercise is something that you as an owner will ignore at your own peril. Looking at age now, the classic rule of thumb that dictates that a puppy under a year of age should exercise five minutes for each month of age. So 10 minutes a day for your new eight week old isn't awful. However, that really only ought to apply to structured walks. Labrador puppies will often enjoy playing beyond this and can also handle short and regular training sessions, both of which count as exercise. Going out in the garden every hour or more to work on toilet training is also technically exercise. So don't feel the need to set your watch by that rule of five minutes per month. Watching out for signs of overtiredness and giving your puppy be plenty of opportunities to nap and be alone means that a much more intuitive approach is absolutely possible and will help your puppy to self-regulate better as he grows. Whilst that growing is ongoing though, your lab puppy should refrain from using stairs and jumping on and off things as much as possible until the growth plates are formed, which is usually around about a year old. Adult Labradors who are not yet seniors are typically happiest when they can have about two hours of exercise exercise through a combination of sniffing walks, off lead running, and ideally, given their inherent desire to chase and retrieve, games of fetch with balls or frisbees, any obedience training, which is a brain and body exercise, is supplemental to this. And the extent to which you develop obedience skills depends on your own standards and also on the amount of drive your Labrador has come to exhibit in adulthood. Indeed, by the time your Labrador is 18 months old, its own individual profile needs to have more of a say than my generic advice. You'll know by this age how much running and walking your dog needs, as well as how much and what sort of play your dog prefers, not to mention their working capacity or desire to train. Later on in life, as they become senior dogs, don't be surprised if their desire to run and play can't be sustained by their aging bodies. Paying attention to a Labrador's exercise needs for the duration of its life is one of the biggest responsibilities of lab ownership and neglecting it comes with dire consequences. A Labrador who is not given sufficient exercise will find its own ways to burn off steam from chewing through crates and doors and furniture to barking the house down for hours on end and even developing heavy mouthing and jumping tendencies that can become very, very dangerous for everybody involved. A Labrador whose exercise needs have been met will be amenable to being left alone and more effective at learning new obedient skills. And more than anything, because a tired dog is a happy dog, your Labrador will be an even more calm and compatible canine companion.